be ahead of the group. Craig is sort of the lead guy here. I'll give it to Craig. Um, so what you see here is uh, it's our, it's our solar drilling. I actually designed this engine from scratch and then modeled it on three uh, better auto desks. Then we put it into action and we built it all in-house. Everything you see, we machined on our CNC, which is a, it's a, a mill that's controlled by computer so we can get precision down to close to a half a thousandth of an inch. So very tight tolerances. So everything, everything you see here, we built in-house. We designed it, we made it besides the parabolic dish. And then, so of course, we've been having some, tr uh, some troubles with the sunlight, of course, you know, living in Oregon, we get three days of sunlight a year. And so the way it basically works is there, inside this chamber right here, there's, two, uh, there's a cylinder that contains two pistons. The piston on top is airtight, and the one down on the bottom is a displacer piston. So it's long and weighs extremely little. If you apply heat to this end, the air inside expands, pushing the airtight piston up. Once it moves it up, the displacement piston drives down, moving all the air up into the cool, cooler end of it. The air cools, the flywheel pushes the cylinder back down, and the cycle just starts over. So it just it's an external combustion engine, so any heat source you can have here runs the engine. So then what we've done up here is we have some neodymium magnets, which are incredibly strong. I mean, you, you have to stick two together, it's extremely hard to pry apart just by hand. So we've uh, super glued them into the flywheel, and then we designed our own little contraption to uh, generate electricity. So we've hooked this up to an oscilloscope, and it's still in the prototype phase, but we've uh, generated about mm, anywhere from eight or uh, six to eight uh, volts from it, just first, first go around. So that's incredibly uh, encouraging that we can actually get, we can get something tangible out of this, that we can actually drive maybe Next step, maybe light bulb, then a battery, then you know, move up so we can get 100% clean renewable energy. So then, uh, decide, uh, decide, uh, designing the base, I'll turn it over to Ben. All right, so I have designed the base and the whole uh, system that the fish moves around. Like we have the bottom here on the card that just moves around, and then down there with the gear. It, it's hooked up to that motor and it spins the dish around in a circle. Right now we don't have it on, but we have a light sensitive photo resistors and uh, it tracks the sun with those and whenever one turns or gets dim, it uses the gear <coughs> to rotate the dish around and it tracks the sun as it goes around. And the software we have, it uh, refreshes every five minutes so it moves with the sun every five minutes. Hi, I'm Robbie Bain. I didn't know this existed till this year. So I jumped in. I was very eager to do anything they put in front of me. I helped with designs and I was manual labor. <laughs> so for, uh, for next year, our idea is we're going to try to get away from the solar aspect because it's incredibly hard to test it when there's no sunlight out. And uh, so we have a couple of ideas. So there's um, we're, we have in the prototype phase right now, we have these small uh, engine, small Stirling engines that use incredibly uh, little heat. So right now we can run it off uh, the heat of a coffee cup. That you just put hot coffee in there and it runs off it. So eventually, once we fine tune it, we can hopefully get it so it runs off the heat of your hand. Um, those are about that big and it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. Then we also have uh, the first robotics team is a competition with uh, ball sports where you have to basically design this robot <coughs> in six in six weeks and then you go and put it on the court and you compete against teams all over the, the state first then you advance to the nation and it's there's really tons of aspects to look at it and it's it's a, it's a great competition to be in and also we have a uh, this product to where we're trying to make a double overhead uh, engine that's cameras so we have no valves and it's just all rotating so and that's no one else has done that before we're being completely innovative here and designing everything ourselves and getting something out of it <laughs> any, any questions good question to create this engine there are actually three phases design production and assembly to design the engine, we used a program called Autodesk Inventor. With this program, we created the virtual blueprints of all the parts for the engine. After the virtual blueprints were done, 
We printed them off to be referenced to when we programmed the designs into MasterCam 9. We then use our MasterCam 9 program to run our CNC mill. The blueprints we created looked like this. After all the parts are designed, we move on to production. For this phase, we need materials with the correct dimensions. Right now, Craig is getting an aluminum slab for the side of the engine. Every part on the engine was made from aluminum except for the flywheel, which is brass, and the hot end, which is stainless steel. Once the piece of aluminum is cut into the correct size, it needs to have the burrs removed before it can be put into our CNC. The program our CNC runs on cannot take the blueprints directly from Autodesk Inventor, therefore it is necessary to redraw them. Once the piece is ready to be CNC'd, we put it in the vise, find the center, and do our tool offsets. From there on, the CNC just runs the program that we give it to create the needed part. The finished side ends up looking like this. But how many parts are there? Quite a few. Once all the parts are ready, we begin assembly. This task takes a while because of all the intricate pieces that go into this engine. Once the engine was fully assembled, it was time to test it. One test we did was to hook up our homemade generator, which was attached to the engine, to an oscilloscope to see how many volts were being produced. Although the number of volts generated by our engine were not off the charts, it was very encouraging to know that we could generate electricity using only solar power and an engine that was entirely designed and created at Newburgh High School.